Hey guys, it's Nick here with Flamingo Soaps. Today I thought I would uh, create my very first soap making and cutting video. One of my very favorite soaps, uh, this one, my Zebra Mint is running low and so it's time to make some more. So I thought I would take you guys with me on the process. So let's get started. So as you can see, I've got quite a few supplies to make these. I've got some of my mixing bowls, some bentonite clay that I'm adding to my soap as well as sodium lactate. I've got my lye, a couple of mixing bowls, my stick blender. This is my mold, which is already lined and ready to go. And then I've got my fragrance oil and some colorants. So the first thing I'll do is mix uh, my lye mixture. Okay, so now I'm measuring my lye. I just take a simple plastic disposable cup here and add my lye into it. And I have a basic scale here, but it does the trick. Perfect. So that's my lye. I'm going to then add the correct amount of distilled water to this sort of jug uh, and then add my lye to it. Okay, so I've got all of my oils and butters here mixed together. They're just kind of hanging out. And my lye mixture is sort of cooling. It's definitely warmer than my oils. So I like to get everything else ready in the meantime. So I'm going to mix up my colors. Uh, for this, I've just taken two more of these disposable cups. Um, and I'm going to mix some titanium dioxide for the white. And then uh, this is my green color. It's the green chrome oxide from Brambleberry. So um, some of the colorants have to be mixed in oil. My experience with titanium dioxide has been that it mixes much better in water. You don't get as much clumping. Um, and you really, I don't think the camera will pick it up, but you really don't even need to mix it. Um, you can just sort of swish the cup like this and it dissolves. It's kind of amazing. I'm just looking into it now and it's already completely dissolved. So you can take that into consideration rather than using an oil. Um, I use water for this one and it's so easy. That's it, like I'll give it a better stir right before adding it, but that's pretty much all you need to do to titanium dioxide. And then you never get clumping. So that's it, this bag is big and it looks like cocaine or something. My little titanium dioxide bag. Um, and then I will add some green chrome oxide to the next one. And I have a tablespoon measure here, but uh, I may not use a full tablespoon. I may use a half. Maybe a little more. We'll see how it goes. I think I'll start with that. And as well, with this, I prefer to add the oxide, the green chrome oxide to water. So you can see there, it dissolves so quickly. Just with that little swish, it's almost done. Anyway, so that's my mixing of my colors. And let's get ready for the next step. And of course, my camera battery is running low. So in the interest of saving time, I'm not gonna film while I blend up uh, everything here, but I've got all of my oil sitting here. You may be able to see the clump of bentonite clay that's at the bottom, so I'm gonna blend that into my oils with the stick blender before adding my lye mixture. To my lye mixture, I added some uh, sodium lactate to harden up the bars a bit. So once that's blended, I'll add my lye mixture. Um, and then I've got my colorants and my oils here, or my colorants and fragrance oils ready uh, once everything is blended. So we'll uh, get this all prepared and then be back in a second. To the first uh, bowl, I'm gonna add my titanium dioxide, which I've mixed already, to give it a nice white color. Mm -hmm. That 
that's about as far as I'm going with that. And then to the other one, I'm going to add my green. I'm going to add a little bit at a time, uh, just to make sure I get the color correct, the color that I want. So we'll see. You guys may not be able to see the color too well, but you'll definitely see it as I'm pouring it. So don't worry about that. I've already got a great green color here. I'm going to add a little bit more. I think I estimated well. This was exactly the shade I was hoping for. And I've used my whole, whole cup. All right, so next it's time for fragrance oils. Okay, I hope you guys can see here. Uh, and if it's not the best angle, bear with me, as this is my first soap making video. I will learn my technique and it will improve. Anyway, so this, I've separated my soaps into these smaller containers just because they're easier to pour. And what I'm gonna do is just go back and forth in the mold, pouring very thin lines over each other. It's uh, as simple, I suppose, as this. Let me see. I'm going to put a paper towel down because I remember that this droops a lot as I go. So you really just go back and forth like that. Trying to create thin lines. And it just creates an amazing swirl. Swirl is probably not the term to use actually, but the design is amazing. I'll show you guys the soap uh, again at the end, the one that I've already made. And I guess there will be a cutting at the end of this, so you'll see that too. But I think it's just beautiful. So you see it's pretty straightforward, but um, a little bit time consuming. So you want to make sure that you have a fragrance or an essential oil that behaves itself. Um, the other day I wanted to make one of these with this really fantastic rose oil that I got from a new vendor that I had never purchased from before. There were no reviews on the oil, so I didn't know what to expect. And of course, I was all enthusiastic, and so I used this huge, giant mold the very first time. And the, the um, soap really just accelerated so fast, um, I couldn't really do anything with it. I created some sort of creation, which actually looks pretty cool. Um, and the people that have seen it have said they really like how it looks. I just don't like how it looks because it's not what I envisioned, but serves me right for using a new fragrance uh, on a huge mold. I should have tried it on a smaller mold first. I'm glad I put this paper towel down. You can see each time I put it back down, I get a little glob of soap. Anyway, as I go, you can see that the soap is thickening, and that's totally okay because then um, you'll get crisper lines. And I'm really not too concerned. I like the variations in the pattern. Uh, So, 
pretty easy. This soap mold that I'm using, um, I made myself. And it was very cheap and very easy. Um, I'm not quite sure I remember the dimensions. I'm in America. I bought the wood at, where did I buy it? Lowe's, Home Depot, somewhere like that. Um, really cheap. And they will even cut the wood for you to the dimensions you need, which is kind of amazing. So I think this mold cost me about three dollars and fifty cents, maybe four dollars and fifty cents, and the cost of nails, which I already had at home, um, and it makes about five and a half pounds of soap. Uh, I cut my bars. It's I know that it's three and a half inches wide, and I uh, cut my bars one inch thick. And I get 16 bars plus some samples from this mold. All right, I've got to refill my little containers here. My battery is also complaining, so I will come back. I'll just repeat this until the end and come back when it's time to sculpt the top. Okay, so my soap is poured battery is a little bit recharged and so then all I do now is decorate the top a little bit so I just take a small spoon and push the soap toward the center this is a technique for decorating the top of the soap that I saw from uh, Celine who has the very famous channel Soper Star here on YouTube. I had always had flat um, tops on my soaps, sort of rectangular bars, which I loved. I try to make modern looking soaps, um, but then I saw that she had uh, these textured tops and it was really so easy to do and so interesting looking so I tried to do it on uh, the very first time I did it was the first time I made this soap and I liked it I don't do it on all of my soaps I, I still do really like that clean rectangular look but this one I like to add a little bit of texture to so you can see how easy that was um, it just adds a little, you know, interest to the tops of the bars. And I don't do too much to it, just, you know, a couple little layers, just like Celine did. She doesn't know me yet because this is only my second video here, at least on this channel personal channel I think has about 300 videos but anyway this is only my second soaping video but I'm quite grateful that I discovered her because she's given me so many ideas there's a lot of really fantastic soap makers who make videos on YouTube uh, that have really inspired me so that is all I'm gonna do with that soap. Let me move the camera so I can show you how it looks on top. So you can see it's just got a little bit of texture, not too much, but I think it looks great. Really interesting. And that's it. So. 
I'm gonna let this do its thing until tomorrow. Oh, I like that at the end there, that's kinda cool. Uh, yeah, I'll let it do its thing here until tomorrow and then we'll be back and I can cut it and we can all see how it turned out. All right, we are back. It's the next day here. The soap has been doing its thing for probably 16 or so hours. Uh, I just got home from work and now it's time to get this out of the mold and cut it. Let's see how it turned out. So let's see. I'll move the mold out of the way here. I'm using, what am I using? Freezer paper for the first time. I've always used parchment paper before. I don't know that it really makes any difference. So, it smells good. It smells really good. I love this fragrance. I'm going to turn on my little side here so I can peel down the bottom. We are looking good. So, I'll show you uh, what I usually do. I use I cut them by hand. I like this crinkle cut. So I usually cut off the very end here, and then I measure out one inch blocks. Just with actually a tape measure and a knife, I kind of eyeball it. Uh, so we'll do that. So let me start by cutting off little piece of the end here. And I'm actually quite surprised at how soft this still is. Hmm. You see that? It looks great. I love the look of it, but this is the end piece. And look, that's not really what I wanted. I mean, it'll firm up. Uh, I just, after so much time in the mold, I expected it to be, I guess, a little harder. Well. I'm gonna go ahead and measure it out and I'm gonna cut one piece here and see how it works. If it's not working, if it's too soft, I'm gonna leave it and cut it in the morning. So I'm just gonna eyeball this. I just kind of take my tape measure like that and a knife and I just kind of make little indentations at each inch. This is a big loaf, so I'll get, it's actually a 17 inch loaf, so I usually take 15 or 16 bars and then uh, use the rest for some samples. Um, so I would like to actually have more samples of this. So I'll probably use just cut 15 bars and then chop the rest up into little samples. I'm going to cut a piece of this. I'm having a feeling that it's a little too soft, but we'll see how it goes. Well, that felt better, but we're still a little sticky here. Let's see. Yeah. 
Let me see the one side. I love how it looks. It turned out perfect. Um, but you can see it's kind of dragging a little bit, and I don't really love how that's looking. So, for the sake of the design, I think we're going to leave it. So I'll come back uh, maybe in a few hours or maybe in the morning and cut it with you guys. All right, so until then. All right, uh, it's now the next morning, so it's about another 10 hours uh, after the last cut. And I cut a couple more bars just to test it out. It's much uh, harder now, so we're looking good. So, we'll give this a cut. I really like how it turned out. Um, I like the pattern. It looks almost exactly like my last one, which is good. Because I really liked how the last one turned out. Um, So I think I said last night when I was cutting that the soap had been curing for something like 16 hours at that point. That was wrong. It had been over a day. It had been about 28 hours. And it's really weird because I use the same soap blend, same oil blend, in virtually all of my soaps. And the cure time really just varies. And I don't really understand why. I think some, some of it has to do with the fragrances that I add, but sometimes I can have a loaf that's really, really hard and ready to cut in 12 hours. This one now has probably been curing for, oh, I don't know. 40 hours or so at this point and it's pretty good now it's still a little bit soft so I don't really know why that happens it's a mystery but anyway I'm now getting a call from work, for the record. It's 5.30 in the morning. I bet they're gonna cancel me. Hold on. Hello? And yes, I just got canceled for the day. So, I work in a hospital and I'm a nursing student. Um, I'll be graduating in December, and I work as a nursing assistant in the meantime. I work in an ICU in one of the hospitals here in Austin. And my first year or so working there, I worked full time. These look really good. I'm really happy how they, with how they turned out. Um, And then I switched to part-time uh, once I got into the nursing program itself. So now, over the summer, when I'm not in class, I'm trying to work as close to full-time as possible. But since I'm no longer a full-time employee, uh, I'm always the first to get canceled or sent to another unit or something. Usually they send me to another unit if we're full, uh, fully staffed in mine. Today, they didn't need me at all. I really like how the top turned out in these. 
really swirly. It looks like ice cream somehow to me. Anyway. So I actually started making soap uh, kind of as an experiment, but it was a way kind of to relax my brain and turn my mind off of all the hospital things that I was thinking about with between work and school. I was in hospitals, um, or am in hospitals, you know, five or six days a week. So. I really wanted to have sort of an activity to turn off all of that noise. And it started just kind of as an experiment. I just wanted to test it out. And now I really like it. So. Anyway. Yeah, these all seem really consistent. I'm really happy how they uh, turned out. Okay. I might be able to turn this so you can see a little better. See the other side? It looks pretty much the same as the front side. My little dog woke up. <laughs> She's tapping around the kitchen here, if you can hear. And last cut here. Okay. ran out of room there on my parchment paper. So that's it. So you can see, uh, I'm gonna cut one or two more pieces up a little bit, but I, with the end, I kind of cut them into thin slices like this, and then I'll cut them in half. And this is a pretty nice little sample size. So that's it. That was my very first soap making video. Um, and my zebra mint soap. It's uh, already available on the website. Um, I've still got several of the last loaf cured and ready to go. So check it out at flamingosoaps.com and pick some up for yourself. You can also follow us all over social media. Um, hashtag Flamingo Soaps on Instagram. We have a Facebook page. Just search for Flamingo Soaps. You'll find us all over the place.